The Universal Studios Florida of the 90s was the absolute best for me. As a kid growing up in the 70s and the 80s, this theme park had nearly every one of my favorite movies made into either a ride or an attraction, and this just blew me away. When I was younger, I used to always watch TV travel destination shows, and would especially love the shows that would feature Disney World and Universal Studios Hollywood, but the chances of me visiting these destinations were very slim, especially with living in the United Kingdom. But, in 1993, this chance came along, and we were going to Orlando, Florida for our first US vacation and what would be that start, of my Universal Studios Florida obsession. So, in this video, I thought I would put a compilation together, of all the best, classic and now defunct attractions from Universal Studios Florida. Most of these videos were filmed by myself, so please excuse the shake in some of them, but they still hold special memories for me, as these rides were incredible and they will live on forever in my heart. Out of all the original opening day attractions only two remain today, the E.T. Adventure and Universal's Horror Makeup Show. Universal Studios Florida has changed so much over the years, since its opening day of June 7, 1990. So now, please sit back and relax and let me take you back to the 90s, and let the memories begin. The Boneyard The Boneyard was an outdoor attraction which opened with the park on June 7, 1990. The attraction featured a variety of props from Universal Pictures films and TV programs including Jurassic Park, Waterworld, Back to the Future and Cape Fear. As well as other films like Ben-Hur and Edward Scissorhands. The area also housed special events such as Halloween Horror Nights and concerts. It was removed on September 8, 2008, to make way for the Universal Music Plaza stage. Ghostbusters Spooktacular Ghostbusters Spooktacular was a 20-minute, Ghostbusters-themed stage show that opened with Universal Studios Florida in 1990. The original version of the show was hosted by a production assistant and based upon events and ghosts in the films. The second version was hosted by Louis Tully and featured a pre-show. It was closed on November 8, 1996, to make way for Twister, Ride It Out, which opened in 1998. Ghostbusters was an action comedy based upon the supernatural happenings in the heart of New York and introduced startling special effects. Our Universal artists have faithfully reproduced the famous Columbia picture set here in Florida. The only thing missing are the ghosts. The uh, Ghostbusters first became aware of the problem when they discovered massive amounts of psychokinetic energy in New York. Spangler explains the seriousness of this situation by holding up a Twinkie. He stated that if this Twinkie represented the normal amount of psychokinetic energy in New York, then the current level of the city's energy would be a Twinkie 35 feet long, weighing 600 pounds. Well, that's all right. I'm going to swoop and was... Somebody, please! 
I'll take care of this. Winston, look out! Whoa! Munch on this! Ray, 12 o'clock! Whoa! Franklin, it, it just popped into my head. What, Ray? What? Something I loved and trusted as a child. Something that could never possibly hurt anyone. It's the Shape of Marshall Land! Let's show this sailor how we play downtown!
The production studio tour was an attraction that toured the studio and production facilities of Universal Studios Florida. Inspired by Universal Studios Hollywood Studio Tour, the production studio tour opened with the park on June 7, 1990. Guests would board a tram in front of Soundstage 19, which was located next to Nickelodeon Studios, or in the middle of two of the sound stages in the park's production facilities. From there they would be taken on a 15-minute journey into and around various sound stages as well as being taken on a general tour around the park. Upon the completion of the tour, guests would exit into the Universal Studios store where they could purchase a variety of merchandise. The tour was closed in 1995, yet the Universal Studios store remains open to this day. Heading on to Fifth Avenue now, you may recognize a few buildings out here like Macy's over to your left. That's the 34th Street entrance from the Holiday Classic Miracle on 34th Street. This is the bill debut of a young actress named Natalie Wood. We'll also hear some music coming from up ahead on Delancey Street. It's the Blues Brothers in Chicago Bound. And I'm just going to go off mic for a while. Just a bit bumpy, but don't worry about it. I promise it has nothing to do with Jose's driving. It's actually the road. This area of New York is paved with what looks like cobblestone, but looks can't be deceiving. It's really cement. When it was still wet, it came through with a cookie cutter like device to cut out the stones. Then when it dried, our art department came through and individually hand painted each and every stone. The same type of technique was used with the buildings around you, which you can see look like they're decades old. This is due to an aging technique known as distressing live action set show that takes place every night out here on our lagoon. It's about 10 minutes long, starts at 8 o'clock, and you'll want to be out here a bit early, maybe even a half hour early, because the area around the lagoon gets crowded very quickly. You don't want to miss a second of our spectacular. Heading out of New York now and into Hollywood, we're turning on to Sunset Boulevard, passing Mel's Drive-In over your right-hand side. You should recognize Mel if you've ever seen the movie American Graffiti. The movie helps out a few rest all the producers thought it would flop. Once it turned out, those producers were dead wrong. Lux's film idea was later released, and it was a big hit called Star Wars. Heading on to Hollywood Boulevard now. Take a look to your left, and you'll see the Pantages Theater, which in the 1950s was home to the Academy Awards ceremony. Here is where you can find the Jurassic Park behind-the-scenes exhibit. That's where you can see the Triceratops Cinnabot, for which Stan Winston Studios won an Academy Award for special effects. 
Also to your left is a gray and white building called the Crest by the Dime. This building still stands out in Hollywood. However, it's had a paint job and a name change. It's now a purple and pink building known as Frederick's Hollywood. Right after that is the Hotel Beverly Wilshire, now named the Regent Beverly Wilshire, which you may know from movies like Beverly Hills Cop and Pretty Woman. Well, speaking of Pretty Woman, take a look over to your right-hand side and you'll see everybody's favorite redhead, it's Lucy. Well, Ricky should be around here somewhere, but I don't see him. You never know who you're going to run into out here in Hollywood. Our stars do draw quite a crowd. Of course, they're always happy to have their pictures taken with their fans and maybe even sign an autograph or two. Well, crossing now from Hollywood Boulevard to Rodeo Drive. Keep looking over to your right-hand side, and you'll see a cinder block building, which is, in reality, not cinder block. It's starting the first and only network just for kids. To our right is soundstage number 20, which was home to the very no bloopers. Get through to you up on the silver screen. Unfortunately, a few have slipped past them. An example of one is one from Parenthood. Now, in one scene, Steve Martin and Mary Steenburgen are driving along a St. Louis highway. Steve turns to mean a pretty woman we just passed by Lucy Ricardo. And speaking of sexy, there's Mr. Charlie Chaplin. What a gentleman. Then. She's the woman who plays Edith Bunker on All in the Family. I have a hard time picturing that one myself. Over to the left are some buildings that have been here since about the turn of the century, but actually they're all... The Wild 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 West Stunt Show was a live stunt show based upon a wide variety of Universal's Western films. Opening on July 4, 1991, in the Amity Island section of the park, the show featured several cowboy-themed actors surviving death-defying stunts, shootings and explosions. The show closed on September 1, 2003, and was replaced by Fear Factor Live which opened on June 3, 2005.
I can't believe I shot a lady. I can't believe I blew up a lady. Jaws was a special effects water ride which opened with the park on June 7, 1990, and was based on the 1975 film of the same name. The attraction placed guests aboard tour boats for what should be a leisurely tour of Amity Harbor, but instead became a harrowing chase between the craft and the determined great white shark. Jaws experienced massive mechanical difficulties following the opening of the park, which resulted in a large reconstruction of the attraction's original ride system. Jaws was permanently removed on January 2, 2012, along with the rest of the Amity Island-themed area to make way for the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, Diagon Alley. Thank <laughs> you. 
Twister, Ride It Out was a special effects simulation attraction located based on the 1996 film Twister. It was announced in 1998 and replaced the Ghostbusters spooktacular attraction in the New York area of the park. The attraction was hosted by actors Bill Paxton and Helen Hunt, who starred in the original film. The attraction closed on November 2, 2015, and was replaced with Race Through New York starring Jimmy Fallon which opened in spring 2017. Fivel's Playland was a children's playground added to World Expo, later moved to Kidzone, in 1992. The attraction was based on the animated film An American Tale, and featured a 30-foot spider web climbing attraction and a 200-foot long water slide, Fivel's Water Slide. The attractions closed on January 15, 2023, along with most of Kidzone.
Alfred Hitchcock, The Art of Making Movies, was a part 3D film, part live action show at Universal Studios Florida, and one of the theme park's original attractions. The attraction featured attacks from birds similar to Hitchcock's film The Birds in the Pre-Show Area, and featured the shower scene from Psycho in the main show with narration by Anthony Perkins who played the part of Norman Bates in Psycho. It closed on January 3, 2003, and was replaced by Shrek 4D in mid-2003. Confrontation was an attraction that opened with Universal Studios Florida on June 7, 1990. Based on the 1976 remake of King Kong, the ride experience allowed guests to encounter an audio-animatronic King Kong while on a New York tram car. The ride was considered to be the flagship attraction of the New York area at the time as well as the landmark attraction of the park. It closed on September 8, 2002, and was replaced by Revenge of the Mummy. The ride, which opened on May 21, 2004.
west side of Manhattan, it's a wreck. We are also being escorted by National Guard helicopters, so we ask there's no lit videotaping or flash photography. My name is Mike. It's my job to safely evacuate into your evacuation shelter. The Bates Motel set was a set of theatrical property which recreated the set of the Bates Motel from 1960s Psycho, and was built for the filming of Psycho 4, The Beginning. It was later used to house the haunted house The Psychopath Maze for several years during Halloween Horror Nights at the park. It opened in 1990 and was closed and demolished in 1995 to make way for a day in the park with Barney which opened later in the year.
Murder, She Wrote, Mystery Theater, was an interactive show that opened on June 7, 1990. In the show, guests were selected to be executive producers on a new episode of the Murder, She Wrote, television show. The 25-minute show focused on the production of a variety of effects including makeup, sound and visual effects before showcasing the editing process. Following the cancellation of the Murder, She Wrote, TV show, the attraction was closed in 1996 and was replaced by Hercules and Xena, Wizards of the Screen, the following year. Lucy, a tribute, was a walk-through museum featuring the best of America's favorite redhead, Lucille Ball. The attraction opened at the park in May 1992, and was permanently closed on August 17, 2015. It was replaced with an interactive Hello Kitty themed store which opened in March 2016. Nickelodeon Studios, was a television studio and attraction that opened with the park on June 7, 1990. The 40-minute attraction allowed guests to take a tour of Nickelodeon's studio facility followed by an interactive live show which featured games based on Nickelodeon shows of the time. It was closed on April 30, 2005, and was replaced by Blue Man Group Theatre which opened at Universal CityWalk on June 6, 2007. T2-3D, Battle Across Time, also known as, Terminator 2-3D and styled as T2-3D, is a former 3D attraction at Universal Studios Florida that opened on April 27, 1996 based on the Terminator franchise. The original attraction cost a total of $60 million. With a total runtime of 12 minutes, the film alone cost $24 million, making it one of the most expensive films per minute in the world. The version of the show at Universal Studios Florida closed in 2017 to make way for the Bourne Stuntacular, which opened in June 2020. Technological precision without missing the sunset. When a mother can tuck her baby in at night from halfway around the planet. Where contact lens neural vision enhancers make human error. A thing of the past. It's happening today. At Cyberdyne Systems. That's right, Cyberdyne. We're back, bigger and better than ever, and we're ready to lead the world down the information superhighway. Our goal? Complete domination of global communications. Cyberdyne Systems has always been a pioneer in advanced robotic systems for medicine, industry, and consumer products, making your life happier, healthier, and richer. 
Cyberdyne Systems is also the leader in defense technology. By the end of the decade, Cyberdyne Systems will unveil the most powerful thinking machine ever imagined, Skynet. When the Skynet system comes online, this nation and its allies will be protected by the ultimate guardian, the first fully computer-controlled defense system. Skynet satellites, in orbit high above the Earth, can read the license plate of any car, in any city, anywhere in the world. Commanding all our weapon systems in one coordinated force, Skynet can react instantly with anything from a surgical airstrike using a single smart bomb to the deployment of 10 armored divisions or the 6th fleet. Skynet also commands the nation's nuclear arsenal, taking it out of human hands and thus reducing the possibility of error to absolute zero. Soon, we can all sleep soundly, knowing that Skynet is running the show. Thanks to Cyberdyne Systems and Skynet, our children will grow up in a world free of fear. Cyberdyne Systems, the future of information systems and robotics, the future of national defense. Cyberdyne Systems, we are the future. Are we in? Easy money. Okay, listen to me, everybody. We don't have much time. Skynet is your enemy. It must be destroyed before it destroys us. Don't believe this cutesy pie video and their slick marketing. These corporate pigs aren't selling safety, they're selling death. They should all be taken out and barbecued. Mom, Mom. the mission, remember? She's a little intense. Okay, um, attention everyone in this building. This is a warning from the human resistance. Cyberdyne is a menace. Skynet threatens the future of the human race. We're gonna stop it. You have five minutes to get out. Repeat, all civilians in this building have five minutes to get out. Old tape. All right. Rolling. Now listen to me very carefully. Only days after its completion, the Skynet computer will turn against us, launching an all-out war against mankind. The battle will last over 30 years, with the fate of the human race at stake. How do I know this? How do I know it's in the future? Because the future paid me a visit. Come with me if you want to live. Skynet sent killer cyborgs, terminators, back through time to remove those who would oppose it. John and I were at the top of their hit list. But the resistance sent a lone warrior, a protector for John. A terminator programmed to defend human life. Get down. <laughs> And despite my reservations about this particular model, he defended us to the very end, sacrificed himself to save the future. And then John and I were alone again. I thought we'd prevented Judgment Day, but it is starting all over. Skynet must never be completed. Get out of the building. You have been warned. You have five minutes before we... Making the future safer and friendlier for everyone. And you'll witness perhaps Cyberdyne's greatest breakthroughs. An incredible new well, technology that will change your world today. Listen to me. You do whatever you need to do to keep them out. But why don't you start by finding things? Is that clear enough? It's happening today. Cyberdyne Systems. We are the future. We ask that there be no photography of any kind due to the highly classified nature of this presentation. All right, well, we do have our clearance to begin. So is everyone ready? Yes. Super! Let's continue. Ladies and gentlemen,
Skynet right now, while we still can. Shut those things down. Right now! Okay, okay, just don't shoot! Now, you people have exactly one no. minute. Be back. Come with me if you want to live. Go with him. He's getting up. I'm out. Get out of here. Whoa, where are we? The future. Final battle between humans and machines. Great, I'd rate this rescue better. Get back home. So what kind of response systems do they have down here? There's only one. But it's a good one. It's called the T1 billion. Move! Go no sight! Earthquake, the big one was an attraction that opened with the park on June 7, 1990. The 20-minute experience allowed guests to experience an 8.3-magnitude earthquake in Embarcadero Station from the comfort of their BART subway train. This original version of the ride ran from 1990 through to 2002 and was based solely on the film Earthquake. The earthquake attraction in its various formats was permanently closed on September 8, 2015 to make way for, fast and furious, supercharged.
grips. Watch me for your cues. Ready? Everyone else, watch the center screen for the final effect. Go with the audio. Drop in the background. And action, shocker! Shake, stagger, scream! Keep shaking, shockers. Keep screaming. It's an earthquake. Keep screaming, shockers. Look out! And cut. That's a take. Good job. and crew join your parties. Families and friends raise your hand so they can find you. It's not an option, family and friends. You have to take the Mac. Well, bye. Yeah. Dynamite Night Stunt Spectacular was an attraction that opened on June 7, 1990. The attraction was a live stunt show themed to Miami Vice located on the lagoon in the center of the park. The show featured pyrotechnics and explosions, mixed with live actors on jet skis. The 20-minute show was always performed during the final hour of the park before its closing for the day. It closed on February 17, 2000, after almost 10 years of performances. Many of the props and sets in the show still remained in place until 2006, when the show was replaced by Universal 360, a Cinesphere Spectacular.
featuring the Universal Studios. As we approach the end of this feature, let's also not forget some honorary mentions to other classic defunct Universal Studios Florida attractions including Back to the Future, The Ride, Beetlejuice's Rock and Roll Graveyard Review, The Fantastic World of Hanna-Barbera, Jimmy Neutron's Nicktoon Blast and Shrek 4D. Back to the Future, The Ride, was a simulator ride based on and inspired by the Back to the Future trilogy that opened on May 2, 1991. The ride story centered on a first-person adventure through time, in pursuit of Biff Tannen, the trilogy's villain. It was closed on March 30, 2007, and replaced on May 15, 2008, by The Simpsons Ride. Beetlejuice's Rock and Roll Graveyard Review was a live stage show that featured Universal's classic monsters. On August 25, 2015, Universal announced that the show at Universal Studios Florida would be closing later this year to make way for Fast and Furious, Supercharged. The attraction closed its doors on January 6, 2016. The venue was demolished shortly after. The fantastic world of Hanna-Barbera was a motion simulator ride with characters created by Hanna-Barbera including Yogi Bear, the Flintstones, Scooby-Doo, the Jetsons and Dick Dastardly and Muttley. The attraction was presented in two parts, a pre-show which established the attraction storyline, and a main ride experience which utilized multiple motion simulation-based cars manufactured by Intamin. It opened with the park in 1990 and closed on October 20, 2002. It was replaced by Jimmy Neutron's Nicktoon Blast in 2003.
Jimmy Neutron's Nicktoon Blast was a motion simulator ride starring Jimmy Neutron and featuring guest appearances of other Nickelodeon characters, including Hey Arnold, Rugrats, The Fairly Odd Parents and SpongeBob SquarePants. The ride's experience featured park guests pursuing the villain Ubla in a rocket chase through the worlds and sound stages of the Nicktoons. It opened on April 11, 2003, replacing the fantastic world of Hanna-Barbera, and was permanently closed on August 18, 2011. It was replaced by Despicable Me Minion Mayhem on July 2, 2012. Shrek 4D was a 3D attraction that took place after the events of the first Shrek film. With Lord Farquaad's spirit not at peace, he plans to kidnap Fiona and make her his bride in the afterlife. With Fiona captured once again, it's up to Shrek and Donkey to rescue her. It opened on June 12, 2003, replacing Alfred Hitchcock, The Art of Making Movies, and was permanently closed on January 10, 2022. Its replacement was Illumination's villain Con Minion Blast, which opened on August 11, 2023. Can we get out of here, please? Sure, of course. Now, you wouldn't happen to have another carriage in your pocket, would you? Donkeys don't have pockets. But some of us do have wings. Well, there you go. That's my compilation of defunct Universal Studios Florida rides and attractions. I hope you've enjoyed this video, if you have please give my video a like, as this will help with YouTube's algorithms, or even better, please consider subscribing to my channel. If you would like to see even more Universal Studios Florida videos from the 90s, just do a search on my channel, as I have plenty more. Anyway, this is me, Disney Dave, signing off, until next time, thanks for watching.